Hey everybody, welcome back to Catholic NYC Presents. I'm Colin Acasa. Thanks so much for joining this evening. Before anything else, please join me in a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, I ask you to please send down the Holy Spirit into our hearts. Please also send the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, your Son, into our hearts. Mother Mary, I ask you to please wrap your mantle around myself and Jackie and all people who are watching and will watch this interview and show and talk. As we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, everybody, welcome back. I hope you are healthy and safe. Uh, as you're probably used to, hopefully by now, uh, before each talk, I share some excerpts that Jesus revealed to St. Faustina, a fantastic and amazing saint of the Catholic Church today, about his messages of divine mercy. Now, again, the word mercy comes from the Latin word misericordia, literally translated means to give one's heart to one who is in misery. So divine mercy in a very powerful way is Jesus giving his sacred heart to all of us in misery. And man, in the times that we're living in right now, with all that's going on, we need God's mercy and divine mercy more than ever. Here's, here's a few things that he said to St. Faustina about his mercy. He said, let the greatest sinners place their trust in my mercy. They have the right before others to trust in the abyss of my mercy. My daughter, write about my mercy towards tormented souls. Souls that make an appeal to my mercy delight me. To such souls, I grant even more graces than they ask. I cannot punish even the greatest sinner if he makes an appeal to my compassion. But on the contrary, I justify him in my unfathomable and inscrutable mercy. Right before I come as a just judge, I first open wide the door of my mercy. He who refuses to pass through the door of my mercy must pass through the door of my justice. And then lastly, I'll read my daughter. Right, that the greater the misery of a soul, the greater its right to my mercy. I mean, take that to heart. The more fear you might be experiencing, anxiety, misery you might be experiencing, just know right now, we have more of a right to his mercy. So just please give it to Jesus. He says, all souls, that she says, urge all souls to trust in my unfathomable abyss of, abyss of mercy, because I want to save them all. On the cross, the fountain of my mercy was opened wide by the lance of for all souls. No one have I excluded. No one I have excluded, he said. So again, I just hope you guys, and we've been encouraging you to please pray the rosary every day, a divine mercy chaplet every day for those who have been dying, uh, and also a spiritual communion. Uh, so I hope you guys have been doing that. And I'm very excited about tonight's talk. We have Jackie Mulligan. I'll tell you a little about her. And she's going to give a talk on health of body and soul. So she's part and she founded Reform Wellness. It's the first wellness program of its kind to merge faith and functional health. Reform reframes health as the state of your body and soul using food and faith as medicine to reconnect people with their bodies and beliefs. Founder Jackie Mulligan is a holistic nutrition, a nutritionist and Catholic wellness practitioner who started her wellness practice in 2016. After dealing with her own health issues, striving tirelessly in the world, she realized she needed to put her trust and identity in something greater, God. Jackie has since worked with private clients, clients, corporate teams, religious communities, and educational institutions from around the world. In her work, Jackie noticed a common denomination. Others were striving to find their way to holiness as well. This led her to create her unique innovative reform wellness program. Today, reform wellness offerings extend throughout schools, businesses, small groups, and individuals, both online and in person. So Jackie, we're very excited to have you. Thank you so much for being on uh, this, this show and take it from here. Thank you so much, Colin. This is such a gift to, to join you tonight um, and to join everybody. So welcome everybody. Um, this is such a, a, a unique time. Um, not only in the world, um, but for, for the state of our, our souls and our spiritual well-being as well. Um, as Colin mentioned, um, I'm Jackie Mulligan. I'm the founder of Reform Wellness. And um, the, the beauty of Reform, my wellness practice, is that we take uh, the state of your body and we, we 
also look at the state of your soul. And we look at both of them together to define what your health is. And I work with people in the world and I work with people in religious life. Um, and it's funny because it oftentimes in the world, there are there's so much focus on the state of our body and not enough state uh, on the state of our soul. And in religious life, there's a ton of focus on the state of our soul, but not always the state of our, our body. And the truth is that if we look at the whole person, there's there's not a disconnect um, between the body and soul. We are, we are one and both are gifts from God. Um, my practice is founded on St. Augustine's quote, take care of your body as if you were going to live forever and your soul as if you're going to die tomorrow. And that's truly, I, I believe more than ever right now, what we're dealing with it in a time where we get to purify our souls um, and, and kind of take a step back, pause and understand what's happening, um, why we've received this gift of time, why we've received this gift of, um, of pause and, um, and really, as Colin so beautifully read um, prior to this, like we're at his mercy more than ever. And, and he's inviting us into his sacred heart more, more than ever. And I look at this time as such a gift, um, even though there's been so many hardships um, between jobs and financial security, um, just, just and, and, and in addition to that more than anything, our health. And so what we'll, we'll, um, I'll, I'll get into in this talk is, is understanding how to maintain um, health uh, in, in the immunity of your body and your soul together, but also understanding what this time can be and why it is a gift. Um, and so when we reframe um, the way that we look at things um, as an opportunity rather than a threat, everything changes. So even though this time can feel really confusing uh, really threatening. Um, it also is a, is, um, is a huge opportunity. And so I kind of look at it as a way for us to say, um, this isn't happening to us, this is happening for us. And when we reframe that, the whole health of, of, um, of the state and this time changes completely, the whole outlook of it. And so just changing that uh, mindset is that it's happening for us and not to us really changes everything. So even um, feeling victimized in a lot of ways um, from having people in our lives affected by coronavirus, losing family and friends um, and, 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 and jobs, uh, security and, and our own well-being, um, the fear of uncertainty. There's so many things that come into this. And so um, we, we will kind of go through different pillars of health and, and the way that I define health to understand how to stay well right now. Um, so in reform, um, we really focus at keeping God at the center. So I started practicing um, in 2016, as Colin had mentioned, in California. And at first I was a holistic nutritionist um, and I focused really on uh, mainly nutrition, sleep and stress management as my main focuses. And I realized that those were really, really important um, until everybody still wanted and needed more. It was, they couldn't eat healthy enough. They couldn't lift heavy enough, um, even with the perfect diet and the way that they slept and, um, and managed stress uh, and moved their bodies, there was still something missing. And I realized that what was missing was God. And so uh, with a lot of courage um, and a lot of hours spent in adoration, I received um, the, the gift of courage to invite God to be at the center of my practice. Um, when I moved back to New York two years ago, I started working with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal and uh, still today work with their postulants. And so I work with um, these men from the world who come into their, um, their friary and uh, literally leave the world behind and enter into um, a new life. And they live a life of obedience and, um, and they literally reform into new men with new names and new identities and um, new vows. And that's really where my practice um, gained its name uh, because I saw these men in formation in the friary and they reformed from men of the world to, um, to friars. And I noticed that's actually the common denominator for what all of us are looking for is to put God at the center and to live a life of obedience. Because when we live a life of obedience, we become free. Um, we uh, often get told in the world that freedom is getting to do whatever we want, but we actually know that that's not true. It's, it's quite the opposite. Um, and health really mirrors that. So health is, is that same kind of approach where we're looking at nutrition, we're looking at the way that we sleep, um, we're looking at personal growth, we're also looking at our relationship with God and we need obedience uh, throughout. 
And so um, in a world that loves diets and loves workout regimens to be black and white, my theory and approach is that the only thing in life that should be black and white is your relationship with God and your relationship with your faith. Everything else should be gray because if, if anything else becomes black and white, that becomes your God. So your diet becomes your God. The way that you move your body becomes your God. If everything is so black and white and that's your main focus, that doesn't mean that you can't eat clean or that you shouldn't. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't exercise, but that shouldn't be the main focus. The main focus is God and everything else will fall into place. Um, St. Padre Pio has an amazing uh, theory about living simply. And what he says is that if you keep your eating, sleeping and prayer times consistent every day, everything else will fall into place. And um, in quarantine right now, uh, much of what I've spent doing, repeating myself day after day with my clients is going over when they're eating, when they're praying and when they're going to bed. And I told them that if you get those kind of organized and, um, and you stick to them each day, your work hours, your workout hours and your, your play time um, will all fall into place. And lo and behold, after a couple of days uh, and now weeks of um, implementing this, the freedom that they feel and the obedience of keeping meal time, prayer time and sleep time consistent has actually led them to better health um, in their body and soul together. And so I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about um, ways to boost your immunity right now when there's so much concern about um, the immunity of our bodies, especially, um, but also this time of, um, of what I kind of mentioned as an opportunity to purify our souls as well. And so um, with this extra time given to us, um, and I actually want to just pause there because for some people, there's actually not been given extra time. There's actually, it's been a busier season. So I, I, I just want to recognize that, that actually for, for what the world is screaming is extra time. Um, there's actually a lot of people who are spread even more thin than ever. Lots of moms who are now wearing 20 more hats than they were, doctors and nurses um, working tirelessly. Um, and, and many other professions um, that, that this is affecting in, 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 in a lot of ways. So, um, so whether you received more time or not, this is still an opportunity um, to kind of see what fits and what doesn't right now for you. Um, so let's talk about the immunity of our bodies and, and really how to boost the, the health of our bodies right now. Um, the best thing that we've received um, is the gift gifts that God gave us. And so if we look at things like sleeping, uh, nourishing our bodies with whole foods, getting fresh air and getting outside with some with sunshine, laughter, uh, positive thinking, um, and hydration, water. Those are those are some tools that are are gifts that we don't actually have to go out and buy or do anything. And so really just using the gifts that we have right right at our fingertips. Um, and kind of looking at our, our health as a bank account. So um, if you were to sit for a few minutes and think about the things that make you healthier as deposits and the things that you do um, uh, that make you less healthy as withdrawals, you would definitely um, have a, a huge awareness around things that you do every day that make you healthier and less healthy. And we want you to make as many deposits right now as possible, especially when our immune system um, could be suppressed with a lot more stress. There's stress um, with the fear of unknown, there's stress in the world with all the chaos right now. Um, and so stress is one of the first things that suppresses our immunity. And so one of the things that we can really focus on is managing stress by controlling the things we can. And all of the things I just listed, for the most part, we can control. You can control when you get to sleep and when you decide to wake up. You can control the foods that you um, that you decide to eat. You can control your mindset for the for the most part. You can control getting outside and and prioritizing fresh air, moving your your body, and also um, prioritizing drinking water. So these are decisions that you make that make you healthier. Um, then there's things on the opposite side, which are withdrawals that can make you less healthy and, and suppress your immune system that can make you more prone to extracting um, different sicknesses or illnesses. Um, that's anger, resentment, or worry. Um, and that's the, the part where I say, control the things you can. And there are some things that are, and most things right now, that are completely out of control. Um, I'm, I'm due to get married in, in June. I don't think that's, uh, that's happening uh, at the date I originally had thought. And, and now 
Jesus is completely uh, at the wheel and, and we're doing things on, uh, on his time in, in his will right now. And so instead of worrying about that, it's the decision to let go and to truly let God. Um, and so releasing worry, releasing fear, releasing resentment, these are all things that literally hold weight onto us. Um, especially when we're in a stress state, um, our stress hormone cortisol raises and our body literally holds on to um, stored fat because it thinks that we are in danger. So if you're dealing with a stubborn lower belly fat or inner and outer thighs, that's where our cortisol lives because your body is literally protecting you thinking that it's in danger. So high stress equates to more um, weight gain. So a lot of times I'm working with people and they'll say, I'm eating really well and I work out, um, but I, I, I can't lose weight. And the first question I, I ask is never about what you're eating or, or if you're moving, it's how's your sleep and what's your stress like? Because those are the two things that affect your metabolism and your waistline more than, more than anything because of uh, the way that they affect your hormones. So really uh, choosing and being very mindful of the things that you're holding onto, your anger, your resentment, and your worry, and really deciding what you can surrender to God right now. Again, looking at it as an opportunity to really take, um, take the back seat and let, let Jesus take the wheel. Um, negative thoughts, uh, renouncing uh, self-doubt, um, things that, um, that potentially could, could, um, could cause uh, even more stress of um, negative self-talk, self-doubt, or, um, or additional stress uh, of finances or anything like that. Um, other things that are really easy to sneak in, especially with, with Easter approaching, um, is, is candy, sugar, sweets. Uh, sugar is, is, is um, something that kind of makes us go down the rabbit hole. And, and one of the things that's so interesting is that uh, many of the religious uh, life, specifically priests that I, I work with, um, they'll say, uh, Jackie, it's amazing because I notice that every time I eat sugar, I'm prone to venial sin. And it's, it's amazing because it's, it's, um, it's either the thing that makes you eat more, so it's gluttony, um, or it, it causes anger because it's this, it's this uh, high blood sugar release, um, or it kind of makes you isolated and, um, and more like recluse. Um, and so it's just really interesting to, to see the, the cycle that, that sugar can feed. Same thing with alcohol. Um, or other substances uh, that can that can sneak in in a time where there's fear and worry and um, and, uh, and and stress. Um, also, being sedentary, you know, just kind of sitting in one place. That's another thing that that can happen in these times where we just we don't have anywhere to go, so we don't really do anything. And so, again, just an invitation, even if it's not very far, to get outside um, and to use the gift of nature, even if it's for a walk. Uh, I think a lot of times we think that unless we're you know, in our Lululemons and, and sweating um, profusely that that has to count as a workout, but a 20 minute walk, um, it's, it's functional movement and it's very, very healthy and, and fulfilling. So these are some things that you can do um, on a regular basis and also just understanding what actually is feeding your body and what's taking away. So keeping your, your health bank account, if you will, balanced. And then if we look at your, your soul, really understanding the things that feed your soul. Um, we just received a beautiful plenary indulgence from, from Pope Francis on Friday. Um, and if you haven't watched that, I would I recommend uh, re-watching it because it was such a huge gift um, to, to not only hear his amazing talk, I'm still dissecting it because it was so powerful, um, but to really take um, that opportunity to, to receive his mercy uh, in, 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 in this time. Um, but some of the things that we can do uh, is, is watch mass daily, watch it on Sunday. Um, there's there's um, so many different live channels and, and Colin has been so gracious to share them via email um, and, so, and, and, and online for, for us. Um, the Friars uh, are doing a daily holy hour every night at 7.30. EWTN has adoration every day from nine to six. There's so many different things that we can do right now to feed our souls. Um, but the gift of, of any space that you have, cultivating silence, cultivating time for scripture, uh, praying the rosary daily, these are all things that are deposits in our health bank account and our, that really feed our soul and, and, and boost the state of our soul. Um, and again, just being careful of the things that suppress the state of our soul, like I mentioned earlier, like negative self-talk or negative thoughts, um, 
any sort of sin. Those, these are really things that, um, that take away from the state of our soul. So being mindful and aware of, um, of our current state of health, just like you would with a, an examination of conscious, like right before you're going into adoration, excuse me, confession and adoration, um, you, uh, you kind of, you do a, a, a scan of, you know, where, what's the, what's the state of my soul. It's a beautiful invitation to check in and say, well, what's the state of my current health? Because my soul is not disconnected from my body. I'm one. So what's the current state of my body too? Have I slept? Where's my stress? Have I fueled well? Am I glorifying God in the way that I treat my body? How are my relationships? What's my personal relationship like right now? Um, am I making time for play? Am I moving my body? I mean, these are all things that play into our well-being because we are a whole person. We're not just our body and we're not just our soul. So it's really looking at, at both of these concepts together and, um, and linking them and linking them together to really define um, our, our well-being. And so when I, when I developed reform, I started um, working, like I mentioned, with religious life and also with one-on-one -on -one clients. And I did find this common denominator that a lot of people um, were, were looking to change their well-being. They were hungry for um, living um, with God at the center. And I wanted to just uh, read a little bit about uh, Father Innocent Montgomery, one of the priests that I, I did work with, and, and just explain a little bit of his experience. You can get an idea, ca capture an idea of, of what it's like um, to, to combine these two aspects of your body and soul together. Um, so one of the things that we asked him was why is health and wellness an important, important part of spiritual formation? Um, when we are functioning at our best physically and mentally, we are able to give the best of ourselves to God and to others. As Father, Father Innocent said, health is not an end in itself, but a state in life that helps us give, uh, give others our God given potential. And so I've noticed that working with both religious and secular communities that people in the world, like I said, neglect their state of their, their souls and people in religious life usually neglect the, the state of their bodies. And so when we take both and we combine them together, it's a beautiful combination of a person who's, who's flourishing. And the best gift of all is when I work with religious life specifically, once we get their, their bodies functioning at their best, the first thing I hear back from them is that they can hear God so much more clearly. Their prayers are so much more clear um, because their, their bodies are functioning well. They're not experiencing brain fog or bloating. Um, they're not tired in the morning. And so their prayers are so much more clear. And this is a really big part of not just focusing so much on one aspect, but really looking at yourself as the whole person. Um, and so this is truly how people can reach their full potential as God intended. So again, the, our bodies are a gift from God. And so it's not, he, he didn't intend for us to only focus on the state of our soul. It's, it's the two of them together. And so there's no disconnect between our body and our soul, um, even though we, we tend to separate them. They're, they're one together. And so is our health. Um, and so I just thought it was really interesting to, to understand the connection um, that religious experience, but, but also on the, on the opposite side, um, when I have people in the world who are, are doing more tangible work um, with, let's say, healing their gut, um, it's probably the most common thing that I see that anybody who has any sort of health concern, the issue starts in our second brain, which is our gut. And I actually call it our first brain because serotonin and dopamine uh, start down here and come up here. They don't come up here. So if you feel like um, you're, you are experiencing some sort of depression or anxiety, a lot of times we're, we're relating that to our circumstances. And nine times out of 10, it's not our circumstances. It's actually what's happening inside of our bodies. Uh, and that's a huge awareness for a lot of people because we have... Um, we have so much going on from, from what we're exposed to in uh, toxins and our environment and, and different things that we're exposed to. So um, one of the ways to rid yourself of physical and spiritual um, toxins and to heal yourself from the inside out, to, to rid yourself of uh, discomfort 
is to understand what's happening inside the body. And so when we gut test, uh, we can usually find bacteria overgrowth or um, uh, parasites. Sometimes we find worms. Um, but the, the truth is that people extract them as a kid and with, um, or children and, uh, or from their children. And when they uh, are in their adult years and experience stress, they, they usually um, become active um, or they suffer from the more, they're more, sim they're more systematic. Um, or symptomatic. And so what happens is um, they can't digest food well, they start gaining weight, they're bloated, they're fatigued, they have anxiety, they have brain fog. And that makes um, praying really, really hard. Um, even more of, uh, of work that it can feel like for some people. And so looking at the way that you fuel um, potentially even testing your, your, your gut health, um, looking at the way that you, um, you nourish your, your body in the sense of the way that you move, sleeping. Um, these are all things that can really help uh, understand what's happening in, inside, inside the body that could cause uh, dis-ease, right? So if we're not at ease, if we have high stress, um, if we're, we're eating foods that are processed, um, that's causing dis-ease in the body, which means that we're, we're going to have a disconnect between the way that our bodies are functioning and what's happening up here. Um, and so just kind of understanding that a lot of the things, again, that we feel that we're in control of, uh, we're actually not. It's, it's actually um, things that are happening in, inside the body systemically that we're, we're not in control of. And so really just feeling like we, um, we have to test and not guess uh, or really become aware of what's happening um, as, as a whole. And so um, I am going to uh, pause here. Colin, did you want to um, pass over some questions just to see if they're um, uh, okay? Yeah. So we have we have five more minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so I'll keep going. I thought I thought five minutes until the uh, until the end of the questions. All right. Good. So um, a couple of other things that um, that I I'll, I'll kind of give you as tangible tools. Um, also is the state of your mind. So we have the state of your body and the state of your soul. And then it's kind of looking at your mindset. So in the beginning, I spoke about um, changing your, your frame of reference from looking at this time as a, um, an opportunity and not a threat. Um, and uh, one of the, the best ways to do that is to look at what's happening right in front of you. So if you can look at your day-to-day, -day, your schedule, um, the circumstances that are in front of you, and really, even, even if they feel like um, they've kind of transitioned you into a victim where it doesn't feel good, it's a loss of a job, it's a change of a major circumstance, um, it's fear, uh, it's illness, whatever that looks like, there's a gift in there for you. And God is in that. And so kind of looking at it from the point of view of um, what is the why? being patient enough to kind of receive the, the, um, the clarity to, to understand that. And then really taking in um, the, the grace that you've already received from this time. So I can tell you just in, in the circumstances um, that, um, that I'm in, just having the ability to, to step back and invite God into what feels very uncertain, completely out of control, nothing that I planned or intended, and also a lot of fear. Um, it's completely made me rely on him uh, 100%. And that in itself is a gift because if anything, I've been stretched to the point where I have to rely on, on him because I have nothing, I can't do anything. I'm, I'm completely out of the driver's seat. And so even though the circumstances of my life seem that, um, that they're not going the way that I want and that is actually making, creating more stress, when I change the, the lens and I invite him in, um, it's actually been an opportunity rather than a threat to, to lean on him and make my prayer life even more strong. And so that's uh, made me grip deeply uh, onto the saints. Um, it's made me realize um, that the rosary um, is the most powerful weapon for, for us right now. Um, and to really understand that uh, this, as Pope Francis said the other day, this is not uh, the end times for us and the, the judgment um, for, for God for us, more so it's the judgment um, for ourselves. And that's for us to be able to discern what stays in our life right now, what's important um, in this time of, of pause or, or for some maybe hustle, what things do we get to give away? Um, maybe tangible, actual um, 
minimizing in our homes, um, minimizing in our schedules, but also minimizing in the, the things um, that we let into our lives, like really holding on to the world. And I think this is a time of purification, not only for our, our souls, but also for our bodies. Like, even if I said something that might have triggered something in you, um, what is that invitation to let go of? Is there a lot of processed food or, or alcohol? Um, have you been sedentary? Like, what kind of triggered something that came up uh, for you in this talk that maybe you need to let go of that, um, that he's inviting you to, to give, do your own judgment to say, what is in my way of letting God be at the center? Has movement been my God? Um, has not been able, being able to go to the gym um, or eat certain foods um, that I'm, you know, strictly doing every single day or eating every single day, has that thrown me um, completely out of control? Do I have to rely on God even more now? So it's really kind of understanding how he's come back into your life with the cross that you're carrying right now and changing your mindset to allowing that to be positive because that's even uniting you even more strongly uh, with your suffering to him on the cross. So there's a lot of beautiful ways to, to really make this time an opportunity to purify your body, change your mindset to let this time be an opportunity regardless of your circumstances and really purify the state of your soul. Um, cool, so Colin, I think you have some questions for us, yeah? Yes, Jackie, thank you so much. I'm so glad you're on because we have to remember that we're body, soul, and spirit, and you got to take care of every single part you know, yeah. of the human person. Uh, so before, before we get to some of these questions, how can people stay in touch with you? How can they find your information online? Sure. So um, my website is reformwellness.co, C-O. And my Instagram handle where I share a lot of reflections from uh, faith and different nutrition and wellness tips is at Jackie underscore Mulligan. And I've been asking all the speakers this. I'm kind of curious. We've, we've talked a lot about it. it's so important to get into a routine, especially when you're homebound. It's so easy to get lazy. How are you balancing your work life, your personal life, uh, and your prayer life? Yeah. So as I mentioned in the talk, uh, one of the things that um, I, I follow very strictly is exactly what St. Padre Pio said. So um, I have a strict sleep schedule um, where I unplug at a certain time every night and wake up at the same time every day. Um, my prayer life, uh, the first and last hour of my day is spent in prayer on both, on both ends. And, um, and then uh, I keep my meal times the same every day. And then work fits in in between those times and I always get outside. So I, I, when I prioritize those three things, sleeping, eating, and um, prayer, uh, everything has been aligning really well. Awesome. And uh, so when we're asking these questions, please feel free to type in any questions you may have for Jackie on the Catholic NYC Facebook page, and they will be relayed to me. We will ask her. Uh, this is a great question here. Uh, one that I like myself. What do you think about naps? Are they part of healthy sleep? Mm. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I let's kind of just talk about how long I think you should sleep each night. And I, I'm still a fan of the eight hours. Um, when people say, oh, no, I only need four to six. I say, no, uh, you don't. You need a lot more than that. Um, but I, I think naps can be really powerful. So uh, every um, 120 minutes or um, two hours, our body resets. And so um, we are designed to follow what's called an old tradian rhythm. And that means that um, we have uh, different windows of time where our body uh, recalibrates. And so as long as your nap is about uh, 30 minutes and not more than that, um, then it can fit in really nicely uh, into, into different parts of, of your rhythm. So a lot of times, even with, with work hours, let's say just to connect this to the question you asked before this, Colin, um, the most efficient way to work is with 90 minute work blocks and then a 20 to 30 minute break all in during your work block and then totally uh, coming out of that uh, for rest. And, and, and in that same token, uh, taking a nap for 20 or 30 minutes can be really, really beneficial. But usually when you go over that is when you become overtired or you're out of that, that um, ultradian rhythm cycle. Uh, what food would you recommend to boost our immune system? Yeah, um, well, there's a lot of foods that can boost it. I would definitely say whole foods. And what I mean by that, to be more specific, is fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, good protein. Um, vitamin C is a really powerful um, supplement to or vitamin to, to boost your immunity, as is vitamin D. And um, vitamin C is more in, in citrus um, fruits like oranges. Uh, and, and vitamin D you get naturally from, from the sun. 
Um, and so those are, are, are two uh, vitamins that you can um, get naturally right now just from lifestyle change, uh, but also can, can supplement with that. Any thoughts on how to support those we live with who are prone to extra stress and worry? Yeah. Um, lead by example. So um, the, the best way for people to learn is to, to mirror and to watch you. Um, so unplugging at night, prioritizing sleep, um, prioritizing prayer, um, making light of, of situations and not in the sense of ig ignoring them by any means, but, um, but really glorifying God and, and trusting um, in his timing and, and his, in his will. So I would say leading by example and, and remaining calm your, yourself um, and maybe even taking off some of their stress load and helping them recognize that they're trying to control things that are potentially out of their control. This is more of a general question. I think it's important though. You know, we've been made for communion and what do we do when we are not allowed to be in communion right now? So what, what have you been doing to try to keep, stay in touch with people? What, have any recommendations there? Yeah, so um, we we are designed to live in community, and um, and this something like this is is a huge gift, right? I've actually been keeping in in touch um, with my community almost more than I did prior to this. I feel like um, because uh, there's just been so many different opportunities to connect. So Zoom and Facebook uh, live, um, but but just kind of keeping in touch with um, with people virtually as much as possible. Um, I hosted a rosary today where 55 people from all over the world joined. It was incredible. So um, just prioritizing that, um, that, that desire for connection, realizing that we were designed um, to live in, in community and it's, and it's actually a really big part of what feeds our well-being. So when I spoke about deposits, that's a huge deposit is making sure that you're checking in with people, um, asking for help as you need, being able to give help, even if that's just from a, a smile and a, and a positive uh, attitude and, um, and keeping in touch with those that you love. Yeah, it's so important. You know, we had Dr. Greg Bertoro on last week. He gave a phenomenal talk on Catholic mindfulness and he did this survey where he went out to 3,000 people and he said the overwhelming number one answer to the questions he was asking, basically what were people most stressed out about or experiencing in this time is the feeling of isolation and feeling alone. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, Jackie had some great, um, you know, suggestions there. I encourage you, I mean, reach out to people who you haven't talked to in a long time. One thing that I've been trying to do is, is pray a rosary with someone that I haven't talked to every, every single night or a few nights of the week, just call someone out of the blue. You know, such an awesome opportunity with the time that we have to really reach out to people. Because guess what? The people that you're reaching out to are feeling alone as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any suggestions on how to practically, you know, this may be new information for people. What, what is a first practical step to really start balancing a healthy body and soul lifestyle if you're just brand new beginner? Yeah, that's such a great question, Colin. Um, I, I'm going to say, let's start with prayer. I think everything's going to come from there. So if you can uh, dedicate 30 minutes a day to prayer, um, that's going to change everything. And, and do it in your own way, whatever feels natural to you. If that's um, praying a rosary, if that's reading scripture, if it's sitting silently in virtual adoration for now, um, if it's, you know, listening to music, whatever that looks like, um, dedicating 30 minutes to God, that's going to be where all of this knowledge and wisdom comes from. So the Holy Spirit will gift you with that. Um, it could be praying a rosary, uh, whatever really comes um, naturally to you and, and, and kind of makes you really feel the most at peace. And then from there, uh, I think everybody knows one thing that they know they need to get rid of or to add. And that's kind of what I said. Um, that Pope Francis so beautifully brought to our attention is that this is actually a time for our judgment to rid or invite in the things that are in our way. Um, it's almost like an extended Lent, if you will. Um, I think this time of quarantine for however, however long it lasts, um, where he's giving us an opportunity to unite with him even more and to grow closer to God. So whatever you know um, is, is, your, is your X factor that didn't uh, lose... Um, they didn't go away during Lent, I would invite you to, to challenge yourself to, um, to either get outside and exercise more, um, or maybe for others, it's exercise less. And um, uh, it could, whatever kind of foods might be in your way, overconsumption, um, and really kind of diving into, everybody knows kind of what their thing is. So we'll say, start with prayer, and then ask the Holy Spirit to, to enlighten you on, on what physical um, aspect you can either gain or, or rid of. You know, hopefully everybody has enough food and they are homebound and they're in their keeping with the government and everybody's asking us to do now let's, you know, God, please all this ends soon. Everything opens up. What are some must foods that we should have in our kitchen? You know, with everything you've been talking about. 
Yeah, I think the the best things to have, and, and you're right, Colin, just really recognizing that um, this this is probably not for right now. This is probably for um, for for when life, um, God willing, becomes a little bit more um, normalized. Um, and and how beautiful that we had so much. Um, abundance we could we could pretty much get anything at any time and, and delivered to our door within within seconds so just the the gift of, of that um the lifestyle that we we live and 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 had before this and and maybe even now um but having whole foods right so things that are grown in nature so let's just talk about fruits and vegetables um getting out to a farmer's market or cultivating fruits and vegetables that's something especially the young adult community that um we might see once or twice a week uh if that and it's really important to just try to have a colorful plate as much as as you possibly can um good protein so if you're a meat eater healthy uh proteins from, from different animal products, um, eggs, meat, seafood, things like that. And if you're not a meat eater, um, just, just clean uh, versions of the vegetarian options for, for protein. Um, I know you didn't ask this, but I think the focus is more of what shouldn't be in your kitchen rather than what, what should be. Um, and those are, I mean, the most common things that I see that people benefit from the, the quickest um, and that I see as the, the most um, let's say a slippery, designs a slippery slope for people is gluten um, and sugar uh, and alcohol. So those are the things that create the most havoc uh, for, for some, but, um, but, but I would say, you know, focusing on the things that we can get naturally in nature are the things that should be in our kitchen that we should be eating most frequently. And this is a more of a general question. I think it's an important one. Uh, it says, I'm having trouble figure out when to let go of control, but mm -hmm. still play my part in a loving way. Any advice for finding balance between being cautious about being clean, but not being over anxious or resentful to the people around you who may not approach things the same way during this time? Mm. This, is, um, this is the story of um, me and my fiance. <laughs> um, Elias is, uh, he was a lot more, um, let's say aware and diligent and obedient uh, when and when all of this was really new to to um, to New York, especially uh, coming out with coronavirus and just kind of like the routines that we needed to to um, to follow and, and, and just the, just be cautious of. And so you think that since I was in the health world that that might uh, be the opposite way around. Um, but it was really beautiful because um, he ever so gently would remind me every single time we, you know, came in and out of of um, of my apartment or, or, you know, if we went grocery shopping or the door handle um, to just be mindful. And those are things that I normally wouldn't be mindful of that he would be more mindful of. And so um, uh, just the gift of maybe inviting people to understand um, where they, they might really not be um, aware of, of the things that they're doing to, um, to cause uh, spreading germs or, or to not be careful. And so just reminding people, hey, you might want to wash your hands or wipe down that, uh, that door um, handle. Or j I, I think a lot of the world is, is laughing right now because the roles between parents and, and young adults have swapped. Uh, we're now we're taking care of our parents and saying, where are you going? You're not leaving. You know, this is serious. Um, and just reminding people um, to really stay obedient right now because we are asked to stay home and we are asked to truly be obedient. Um, and that's where, again, the invitation and it's usually just um, ignorance. Um, and so once once they're aware, um, then it's up to them. So a gentle invitation um, and, and a reminder where we shouldn't make the assumption that people really just do know it could be a lack of, of knowledge or awareness. And it's also remember, important to remember that everyone's dealing with this in a different way. It's a yeah. shock to everybody. Uh, so for sure, be safe and be vigilant to what's being asked for, but also do your best to be patient with people. Uh, you know, everyone's gonna be handling this in different ways. Jackie, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show today. Uh, and can you just tell us one more time how to get in touch with you, your website one more time, just to... Sure, absolutely. Um, my website is reformwellness.co. Um, there's a section for um, contacting us to, uh, to we give free consultations at any time. And it doesn't mean that we work together. It's kind of just kind of an invitation to, to talk and um, maybe see how we can lead you in the right direction. And then my Instagram handle is at Jackie underscore Mulligan. Awesome. Thanks so much. And guys, uh, so tomorrow night normally would have been our young adult mass at the cathedral uh, with all that's going on. Of course, we're not having it, but please join us tomorrow night. Father Augustino Torres is going to do a live stream mass uh, specifically for the young adults. 
So we hope you turn in a Catholic MIC Facebook Live at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow evening. And as you've been hopefully seeing, we're going live every Monday and Thursday from 7.30 to 8.15. We've got some amazing guests coming on. We've got Jim and Jeannie Gaffigan next week and Jackie and Bobby Angel. Uh, my friends Ashley and John Rona from Rome. They're going to talk about what's been going on in Rome and, and other such topics. And please also check out the Catholic NYC Presents YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that because after these live talks, they, we download everything to that YouTube channel. Please also check out Catholic NYC Instagram because uh, we'll be hopefully in the future be doing some of these shows live on Instagram as well. Uh, Jackie, again, thank you so much. Uh, and please all join me in a prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Saint Joseph, terror of demons, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And Jason Everett and I talked about these three last night. We have a great opportunity. I strongly recommend either Father Donald Calloway's Consecration to Saint Joseph, that's still available online. And check out, if you haven't done a Marian Consecration, the 33 Days to Morning Glory that Father Michael Gately has done. He's also done a Consecration to Divine Mercy known as 33 Days to Merciful Love. And there's also a very powerful from St. Louis de Montfort, 33 day consecration. You know, we're all kind of homebound to at least the 30th. This is an awesome opportunity to do these consecrations. We strongly recommend them. Please keep up the spiritual communion every day, the Divine Mercy Chaplet for those who are passing away, and the Rosary. And we hope to see you tomorrow night at the Young Adult Mass live streaming with Father Augustino Toros. Guys, we love you. Thanks for joining.